Hi guys and welcome to a new video. This week I'm going to be showing you how to check and adjust the valve clearances on this 1990s Honda CG125. The Haynes manual recommendation for checking and adjusting the valve clearances is every six months or 3,700 miles, whichever comes soonest. I'll be taking the torque specifications and valve clearances out of the Haynes manual so we can rest assured that they're from a trusted source. With that being said, let's get on with the job. So step one, remove the flywheel cover. To give us access to the flywheel here. And this is an overhead valve engine. So it means the valves are on the top and this is a rocker cover up here. So we're gonna remove the rocker cover so we can check and adjust our valves. And while we're around this side, we can disconnect our spark plug, move that out of the way. Now it's a little bit tight, but it does come out. There we go. Let's make sure this rocker cover gasket is intact so we can reuse that the valve clearances are set while the engine is cold and it has to be at top dead center so the next step is to put this engine at top dead center and to do that i'm going to take the spark plug out so we can see where the piston is um, in relation to its stroke and we want it to be at the top of its compression stroke just before the power stroke and that is top dead center so let's take the spark plug out So on the intake stroke, the piston comes down and it draws a fuel air mixture through this carburetor into the cylinder. That fuel air mixture is then compressed and that's known as the compression stroke as the piston comes up. The fuel air mixture is compressed, ready to be ignited by the spark plug. And it's at that point where the engine is at top dead center. Both of these valves will be closed. The fuel air mixture is compressed the contact points or the contact breakers open, causes a magnetic field to collapse inside the ignition coil and that generates a spark which then forces the piston down. And as the piston comes down, that's known as a power stroke, it will then come back up to get rid of the exhaust gases and the exhaust valve will then open to discharge the exhaust gases through the exhaust pipe. And in a nutshell, that's how a four stroke engine works. It just does that over and over and over and over and over and over. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. So we need to set the engine at top dead center, the top of the compression stroke just before the power stroke. And to do that, we rotate the flywheel on the other side of the engine. We can rotate the flywheel anti-clockwise to put the engine at top dead center and the flywheel's actually got markings on it here, an F and a T. The T is for top dead center. Here you can see that T is lined up with that marking on the stator plate. So let's go and check to see if it is at top dead center. So the piston is at the top of the cylinder. I can feel the top of it there with the screwdriver. Now it's easy to assume that just because you've lined up those markings on the other side with the T, that the engine is now at top dead center and we can do our valve clearances, but it's actually at the top of the exhaust stroke, not the top of the compression stroke where we want it to be. And we can tell that because there isn't any clearance between the rocker and the valve like there should be. And we wanna put our feeler gauges in here to check and adjust our valves. So we need to go and rotate the flywheel another full turn so that the engine is at the top of the compression stroke, not the exhaust stroke. So I'm just going to rotate the engine another full turn so that our T lines up. There we go. And that is now at top dead centre. And we should have clearance between here and here. We're now going to get our feeler gauge and the valve clearance on both the inlet valve and the exhaust valve is set to 0.08 millimetre. 
and we're going to put it in between the rocker and the valve and I can feel that it's very loose. So we're going to slacken this locking nut off with a 10 mil spanner and then I'm going to adjust it down. And it wants to be a tight sliding fit. It's quite hard to describe it, but you get a feel for how it should be. Yeah, these are really out of adjustment. I don't think this has been done for a long time. See, that's too tight now. I'm going to loosen it off a touch. There we go. And now I'm going to hold that there and lock it down. And we can do the same with the inlet valve, put our feeler gauge in here, loosen off the locking nut, tighten it down slightly, a little bit more. That's too tight, back off a little bit. And that's good. And then lock it in place. And that's it. We can refit the rocker cover. And the torque specification is around 10 foot pounds for these. We just nip that up. Don't go mad. And the flywheel cover can go back on. I'm just going to summarise this video and talk a little bit about why we have a valve clearance and why it's so important for the performance of the bike or the engine. It's not just on bikes that you have valve clearances. I had it on my old van and that was on a four cylinder engine. The principle was the same, except you've got four cylinders to check and adjust the valves on. And I made a separate video about that if you're interested. I'm just gonna read you a short passage out of the Haynes Bible here, which I think summarizes it quite nicely. It is important that the correct valve clearance is maintained. A small amount of free plate is designed into the valve train to allow for expansion of various components. And they're talking about thermal expansion there. So that's why we do our valve clearances while the engine is cold. You have that gap, but as it heats up, that gap is taken up and allows our valves to open and close fully um, as they're supposed to. If the setting deviates greatly from that specified, a marked drop in performance will be evident. In the case of the clearance becoming too great, it will be found that the valve operation will be noisy and performance will drop off as a result of the valves not opening fully. That's the case that we had, and I can safely say that now the bike is much quieter. If on the other hand, the clearance is too small, the valves may not close completely. This will not only cause loss of compression, but will also cause the valves to burn out very quickly. In extreme cases, a valve head may strike the piston crown, causing extensive damage to the engine. So there we go. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found value in this content. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And if you click that alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye for now.